Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Grace Hopper's Celebration of Women in Computing. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Grace Hopper Conference here in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We are joined by Raji Arasu. She is the CTO of development at Intuit, and also by Mariana Tessel. She is the Chief Product Officer at Intuit. So thank you both for joining us. you got the title wrong. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you do? Please correct me. It's SVP. SVP. SVP of um, our organization is called CTO Dev, and I manage the platform and infrastructure services for our... Great, so now we've got the under control. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your background. We'll start with you, Raji, about how you got into this business. I um, have been about 27 years in the consumer and retail space, um, and uh, a, a ton of background around uh, e-commerce and payments. Um, this is actually my first job, sort of focusing on platform and core services for the uh, company. Um, a huge responsibility, my job is not just to provide um, and you know delightful services for my both my internal and external customers but to really make sure that we are um, really thinking about the future and, and the capabilities that we're building for the future so super excited about my role at into it how about you Mariana uh, first of all uh, thanks for having me here yes. and I have to confess this is my first time at the Grace Hopper that's conference. not a, that's wonderful <laughs> that's, that's that's great <laughs> and I'm I'm completely blown away from uh, uh, the wonderful people here and the representation and the energy, so I'm now a fan. Uh, so, so anyway, I just want to say that, um, you know, I, um, uh, my background has always been engineering. I've done multiple engineering roles. Um, I actually, before this, I spent a lot of time in uh, systems and infrastructure, and I really get a kick right now of, uh, out of using um, some of the products I built into, uh, and actually actually using them in, in other products and seeing how customers are using it. So that's an interesting kind of uh, uh, journey and um, interesting to, to see kind of full picture um, of, of kind of the industry. Both of you, and we, and we are here at Grace Hopper, which is a celebration of women in computing, and both of you are passionate about, about creating a more inclusive engineering culture. Can, can you talk about why, why this is a passion project of yours, and then also what you're doing to, make, to, to help that happen? Raji. I, I think, I, I mean, Grace Hopper, I, this is my seventh year in the conference, and so I love it. you're a veteran. It. She's wow. a virgin, I'm, I'm you're a veteran. A, wow. I'm definitely a veteran. I'm a <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I think it's, it's such a, a joy because it not only, I have started to recognize some familiar faces, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity for us to network with women in technology and talk about actually what's core is not just the issue around fixing the numbers, but actually we talk about capabilities and building, you know, what's really important for a craft. And so I'm actually excited about that. The more and more I see, you know, we have about 112 people attending from Intuit, and a ton, you know, a ton of men as well participating in that. But a, a lot of people are going to be talking about things that are very core to us, like data engineering, data science, um, architecture, services oriented uh, journey, and all of that, which is awesome because I think that's what people want to hear, the work that we do, and they want to understand what it would, would, would be like to work at Intuit. So there's a ton of opportunity for companies and for individuals who work there to really show what they do every day and really connect in a very authentic way and show off their work um, more than actually be you know, really talking about the Uber problem that many of us do care about that as well. But I see down here, I, I, especially where we are sitting, everybody's connecting on what they work, what is the work that I'm going to do, or what's the stuff that actually interests me, which I think is pretty cool. During the keynote, Melinda Gates had a very quotable quote, and she said, um, not every idea is wrapped in a hoodie. Not every good idea is wrapped in a hoodie. And this is really bemoaning the programmer culture. Is that message getting through, do you think, to young women in the sense of, this is, this is not all the sea of white dudes? You know, I, I I think it is, but there's still like work to do, um, both for like women that enter the field as well as um, women that've been here um, for for a while. And 
Uh, you know, and there's there's still plenty of opportunity. So, um, you know, the the culture is definitely at, at least. I mean, I'll, I'll have to tell you that again, being. Um, a, a bit in the industry now uh, and gaining a bit of a perspective. Just the fact that it's been talked about and the fact that there is more uh, energy towards solving it is is already, um, you know, a great uh, win. And you know, to your to your um, uh, question before, if I can jump on that yes, as well, absolutely. you know, this this, uh, this whole idea of diversity in the workplace. There is nothing. Um, I mean, I don't know if there's much to say there beyond what already said about how it's good for businesses, how the customers that many of the, uh, I know definitely for us in the small businesses, uh, the, a lot of our customers are uh, diverse and we want to have diverse people build product for, for our customers, right? Um, you know, so all of these are, are true, it makes sense for the business. But no, I can tell you from my own lens and my own kind of, um, perspective and experience, you know, uh, women are just awesome. And they make like outstanding engineers, outstanding leaders. And every time I have a group of, uh, you know, that, that has uh, all sorts of people, again, all, all kind of diversity, it's just a stronger uh, group. So some of it, you know, I love to have a diverse team uh, selfishly because it's an awesome team. And that's kind of what I think uh, we should all be pursuing. Just um, um, be awesome, not just not just diverse. You know. So, so you're passionate about getting more women into this industry, keeping them, retaining them in the industry. But tell me a little bit about the tech. I mean, because that is, that was obviously your first love, and that's why you do what you do. So, tell me about what you're working on that that's really exciting to you at Intuit. I, I think you know, as as I look at my past, one of the things that always excited me is to work on complex stuff that actually makes a difference in the world. And it started fairly early on in my career where I started to, when, when I worked at eBay, it was about actually connecting to our customers and sellers and having that sort of a social impact. Moving on to StubHub, it was a lot about actually entertainment and how do you really get people to the game and that perfect evening they were looking for. And then moving on to Intuit, it's about making that financial freedom possible for many of our customers. And I think when I look at that, for Intuit there's a huge opportunity which we are all actively working on is to start looking at our data and be able to create some delightful customer experiences for our people. And to, to really give them more time and more money at the end of the day. And I think, and that sort of confidence in our own products about the decisions we make for them and the expertise that we provide. And so as part of that, a lot of that can only come alive with technology. So when we start to look at that, the, you know, there's a huge focus within the company on building great tools for our developers so they can move faster. There's a huge focus on trying to do AI and machine learning on our data and uh, looking at what we can do to personalize our experiences for our customers and reduce friction in the flow. There's a ton of work that's being done there. And I also think that we, we're very excited about our journey to the cloud and having gone through a whole services um, you know, oriented architecture, re-architecture that we have been uh, embarked on for many years. So I think really, really there's a ton of good work that's happening inside with all towards the focus of servicing the customer. So there's a ton of conversations that we have around customer empathy and then all of the technology towards making the lives of our customers better from a financial perspective. So and giving them back more time and money, absolutely. as you said. Absolutely. Yes, yes absolutely. Yeah. If, if I can add um, to that, like our uh, mission as a company is to power prosperity around the world. And you know, and, <clears throat> and that's like a, a great mission, but as Raji was saying, it's even awesome when you get to connect technology to a mission that, that is really, um, inspiring like this yes. and, and yes. is really something we put in practice. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk specifically on one of my products, uh, QuickBooks Online QBO. Uh, you know, we have uh, the, the, a lot of the problems that, that we, I mean, a lot of the challenges, when should they call it a problem? Challenges that many of the SaaS companies are facing in terms of scale, in terms of velocity, um, how are we doing um, DevOps in the most modern way? How, what's our CI CD pipeline look like? Um, how do we use, we have all this uh, great data, 
how do we use the right data, because obviously we want to respect, respect privacy, uh, how do we use the right data to um, giving even more value to our, getting more value to our customers, how do we apply machine learning and AI and uh, you know, et cetera, to make it even more interesting because we have uh, uh, some uh, um, touch with financial uh, data, there's a lot of uh, view on security and what we do there, so lots of problems to solve in, in uh, um, that are deep te technical problems, lots of modern technology, some that other that you know, we're, we, uh, we have to look at, but you know, really um, interesting set of challenges from all the way to, in, it's close to the infrastructure, all the way to the UI and some really cool things that we're doing there. I think that's a really great point and the fact that, you know, as you're women technologists, so you, ha you face issues of biases and sexism in the industry, but as technologists, as human technologists, you face questions about, am I, do am I looking at the right data? Is this data secure? What, am I doing enough around privacy? Do you think that this conference does enough to acknowledge both sides of this coin in the sense that you are technical leaders in your field and you are here at a tech conference, but then you're also here to rally around this issue of getting more women and retaining more women in the industry? What do you think? Um, I, 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 think I think when I am in this, in the booths here, I sense it. I sense that we're talking about the real problems around technology, the, the conversations around the specialities that are required in data science or maybe architecture, maybe engineering, I mean, any parts of that, we do have those conversations. I think at the, at the keynotes and maybe at the higher level, it's a lot more about developing women and, and addressing the problem and probably building leadership. Um, so there's probably two flavors that you find in this conference, which I think cater to different sets of women, and uh, some about staying in the field and not sort of you know dealing with the problems that we have. So I think it, it does, but I think it'd be awesome to have um, a panel where we have very differing points of view on a technology <laughs> and having a really good debate about that, which would be really cool, I think, if we add something like that. I don't know if it's in our curriculum. I am definitely not aware of everything in our curriculum, but it'd be cool to have a panel like that, which is debate, yeah. I want to wrap up here, but I want to ask, what is your best advice for aspiring women in, in this field? Um, and it could be someone who's, who's just starting her computer science journey in college, or it could be someone who maybe is feeling well, as though, do I stay in this field? I don't know if this is for me. What would you, what would you say to that young woman? Um, you know, uh, again, maybe that, that's kind of something that, that uh, uh, she heard before, but I would say, you know, go for it, stick with it, be ready to fall down and uh, come back up and be ready, open, be open-minded, know that you can learn anything, and you know, but um, stick with it. Just, just stay, stick with it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> through hard and through easy. I love that, I mean, I want to, I definitely second Mariana saying, don't be afraid of failures, take it on and, and, and you know, use that as an opportunity to convert that into success in the next, next opportunity that you have. I think the part that I would also say is for tech, being a, a leader in tech and staying true to it, you got to have a learning mindset. Every single day you come in, you got to learn new skills, you have to be open to change and constant change. Um, and if you learn, and every one of us has different ways to learn, you know, some of us learn through conversations, some of us through learn through reading papers, whatever that might be. But if you do that, you will stay as a credible and relevant leader for the longer run. The growth and mindset. Absolutely. absolutely. Well, Raji, Mariana, thank you so much for joining us. It's thank been you. a lot of fun. Thanks for having us. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight here at the Grace Hopper Conference. We will have more just after this. <laughs>